Hatred, extreme dislike or disgust, resentment that is usually mutual towards something or someone. When the coronavirus stopped the world, something or someone had to be blamed. Since it came from China, the Chinese were blamed and all who look Chinese. And crimes against Asians have skyrocketed. I recently spoke with members of the Madison Asian community who are trying to stop the hate. Stunning, but no longer surprising in the U.S., violence against immigrants is a shameful part of our country's history, a country of immigrants turning others into scapegoats. For Asian Americans, the cycle never stops. Socially and culturally, they're still seen as people who are not of this nation, can never be part of this nation. The mid-1800s, the gold rush, the railroads. Immigrants are cheap labor, but they're taking American jobs. Congress banned Chinese immigration in 1882, and many of those representatives had never met a Chinese person. We wanted their work, but we didn't want them to vote. We um, questioned whether or not they could be part of our society. After the day that will live in infamy, President Franklin Roosevelt and the U.S. government put people with Japanese heritage into internment camps. And we didn't do that with German Americans. We didn't do that with Italian Americans. Of course, Germans, French, Swedes, Polish, Irish, and Italians lived through many forms of discrimination. But once assimilated, the other immigrants were stealing jobs. The story of immigration is that the United States actively goes out to other nations to recruit workers. Now, 80 okay. years later, Later, history repeats itself. Kung flu. Yeah. History has shown that Asians get blamed with diseases that came from Asia and that we would be met with violence and policies. San Francisco State University professor Russell Jung helped create StopAAPIHate.org. Reports from victims starting March 2020 to March 2021 rose 74% from 2019. 12.6% of the targeted hatred towards Asians, physical assaults. 65% verbal harassment. 18% shunning. What's more angering is that people are targeting our vulnerable populations. This isn't a white versus non-white issue. Economic disparities don't hit minority groups equally. When I see African Americans and Asian Americans in places like Oakland or New York City, where the pro based on proximity, these are two groups that live side by side together, mm -hmm. that are both under deep economic duress. Well, we start to see a lot of African Americans target Korean you know, liquor stores. They've been living in this neighborhood forever. They try to go and get a loan to start a small business. They get denied because they're African Americans. And they're like, how is it that I've lived here and I wanted to own that liquor store, but I could never. The murder of George Floyd galvanized this country and the marginalized. The Black Lives Matter and then with this anti-Asian violence, I think th these two communities are really standing up. So for me, it is an inflection point for the Asian American community. We're not taking it anymore and we're calling for change like we're done with all of the thoughts and prayers we're done for with all of like the awareness kind of like what represent hong so like we're ready for action now so what actions can all of us take together we should absolutely be fighting to make sure that each and every one of us has the agency to fully participate and that we have the rights to affordable health care um actually free health care housing um living wage jobs, and to be able to use our voice to demand better. Everyone has a part. Everyone has something that they can do. Uh, it may not be marching the streets, but it may be educating yourself and having a conversation with your friends or family. Everyone has a sphere of influence. The ask is to be kind and see one another as human beings that deserve to be fully participating in their communities. I think I see so much lost potential by racism that we're not investing in people, that we've defunded communities for years by policy. And it is time to reinvest in people, to believe in people, to respect people, and to be kind to your neighbors. So why do we hate and show hatred to each other? It's not necessary. All of us should look deep into our hearts and ask ourselves why we hate. Then realize hatred and violence against each other aren't going to fix whatever it is you think is wrong with our country.